hello friends uh, welcome back to my video series on analysis of determinant structures so in these uh, series of videos i will be looking on to finding the deflection of beams using one of the method called moment area method i don't want to spend more time in the actual concept and the theorems i in this video i'll quickly uh, run you through the mohr's theorems the mohr's first theorem and the mohr's second theorem so we'll quickly start with the moment area method that is the mohr's theorems so the mohr's first theorem uh, uh, states that you can see here the change in slope over any length of a member is subjected to bending and is equal to the area of the curvature diagram over that length so to understand that theorem properly we can see this uh, formula wherein it has been told that the change in the slope between points a and b okay please remember the change in slope between point a and b is nothing but equal to the area of moment diagram that is m diagram means the area of moment diagram between the same points a and b divided by ei okay so i will uh, once again quickly get you through the change in slope between points a and b is equal to the area of the moment diagram between the same two points a and b divided by ei now to understand this theorem properly let us take one example of a cantilever beam which is subjected to a point load p at the free end let the e and i be constant for this beam so i mean to say the the flexural rigidity be constant so e refers to the angst modulus and i refers to the moment of inertia let them be constant so the cantilever beam is of length l and is subjected to a point load p now when we apply a point load p on the beam the beam will have some deflection now when i try to draw a tangent at a which is fixed end that tangent is exactly a straight line okay because a is a fixed end so when i try to draw the tangent to the deflected shape of the beam at point a since the deflected shape of the beam at point a is straight because it is a fixity the tangent will also be a perfectly horizontal one now when i try to draw tangent at point b which is at the free end so that tangent will be something like this you can see here this this is that tangent okay so the change in slope between point a and b is actually the original tangent that is the original shape of the beam that is this is the tangent which is drawn at a okay and this is the tangent which is drawn at b so the change in slope is the angle between these two tangents and that is denoted by the term theta b that is slope at b so the slope at a is a straight line and slope at b is a tangent and the change in slope is the angle between those two tangents so this is actually the change in slope and that is denoted by the term theta b that only we want right that is the slope at point b the slope refers to okay whenever you have a say a beam okay and let this be the deflected shape of that beam so when i want to find what is the slope at this point so in that case what you have to do is at the same point on the deflected shape of the beam you have to draw a tangent and this is the original shape of the beam so that change uh, that is the difference between the angle between the original shape of the beam and the drawn tangent this is actually denoted by slope that is theta okay so that only we want in this case also that is the change in slope and that is a slope at point b actually the most first theorem gives you the slope at any point on the beam now we know what is the change in slope what i have done in this step is i have drawn the bending moment diagram that i will call it as a m diagram okay so this is the bending moment diagram so wherein you can see it is very straight forward the bending moment at the free end is zero and the bending moment at the fixed end is p into l now in the next step what i will do i will draw one more diagram called m by ei diagram it is nothing but the whatever bending moment diagram you have drawn you have to Uh, divide the whole bending moment diagram by ei that is the flexural rigidity of the beam that is nothing but is m by ei diagram so there is no difference between the bending moment diagram and the m by ei diagram only the thing is you have to just divide whatever bending moment is there divided by the flexural rigidity of that beam that is ei so that is actually called the bending moment diagram so that is uh, m by ei diagram now when i come to come back to this uh, equation here so the change in slope i will write it as the slope at b minus slope at a that is a change in slope right equal to area of m diagram so what is that area of m diagram so this is the area of m diagram so that is area of this right angle triangle half of base is 
L and the height is P into L. That is what I have drawn here also. Half of L into P L and this divided by E I. That is the area of M diagram. This is actually the area of M diagram. That is half of L times P L is the area of M diagram divided by E I. So that comes out to be P L square by 2 E I. Now we know that since A is a fixed support, so the uh, that is a slope at A will be 0. Since A is a fixed support, theta A is 0. When I substitute this in this equation, I will get as theta B, which is slope at B is equal to P L square by 2 E I. So this gives you the slope at point B for this cantilever beam subjected to a point load at the free end. So the Morse theorem, this is the first Morse theorem which can be used to find the slope at any point on the beam. So this is friends, uh, this is how we can uh, find out the slope at any point on the beam using the Morse first theorem. Okay. Now there is one more theorem that is called Morse second theorem which actually gives you the deflection at any point on the beam, beam using moment area method. Now let us try to read out the statement of the moment uh, more second theorem. If you can understand it's well and good or else I will try to explain that. For an originally straight beam subjected to bending moment, the vertical intercept, okay, this is a very important term, the vertical intercept between one terminal and the tangent to the curve of the another terminal is the first moment of the curvature diagram about the terminal where the intercept is measured. Looks a bit confusing will try to explain that quickly now here we are using a term called vertical intercept instead of the deflection you can refer any of the textbooks to get more detail into something called vertical intercept now in our case that is the cantilever beam with the slope at the uh, sorry point at the uh, concentrated load at the free end there is no nothing difference between the vertical intercept and deflection this makes some difference when we have some simply supported beams so we'll see all those things when we come to the numerical exams part examples part now here in this case the vertical intercept of at b with respect to a you have to read it like this vertical intercept at b with respect to a so this line indicates you have to read it as vertical intercept at b with respect to a is equal to area of m by ei diagram between A and B okay so that is area of M by EI diagram between A and B multiplied by distance of point B to the centroid of M by EI diagram so let me quickly exemplify this using one simple example of a cantilever beam same example subjected to a point load at the free end of length L when we apply the point load the beam gets deflected something like this so this difference that is difference from here up to here is actually the vertical intercept at B with respect to A means what is the vertical intercept of this B point with respect to A point so that is this one in our case this is nothing but the deflection at B in this simple cantilever beam example but this will not be the same in case of simply supported beams so what you have to do next is I have to once again draw the bending moment diagram that is PL that is called M diagram that is bending moment diagram next I have to draw once again the same thing M by EI diagram that is same thing M by EI and now let this be the CG of this M by EI diagram and we actually need what is this distance that is distance from point B that is where we are actually measuring the deflection up to the CG of M by E diagram so this is simple right angle triangle which you know the CG is two third of L so this distance will be two third of L and you know by default this distance will be actually one third of L okay now when I come back to my equation that is the statement here so the vertical intercept at B with respect to A that's what I'm writing here somewhere okay vertical intercept at B with respect to A is equal to half of that is M by EI diagram between A and B that is half of L times PL by EI that is area of this one that is here yeah this this area okay half of L times uh, PL by EI that is the half of L is base and height is this height is PL by EI multiplied by you can see here distance of B to the centroid of M by EI diagram that is it is that is 
this distance of B up to the centroid of M by A diagram, which is nothing but two third of L in our case, which you already found out. So that's what I'm writing here. So once you solve this, I told you in my in this case, in this example, vertical intercept at B with respect to A is nothing but deflection at B is equal to PL cube by 3i. So this will give you the deflection at any point on the beam. In our case, we have found the deflection at the free end of the cantilever beam. So the Morse second theorem will actually give you the deflection at any point on the beam using moment area method and the first theorem gives you the slope at any point on the beam. So we'll uh, see some of the numerical examples in the upcoming videos. Till then, thank you. Bye.